Good morning, Patterson. Good morning, Newark. South Orange, East Orange, West Orange. I Heart Radio, Connecticut. What was up, Bonnie? Morning, Angela Yee. Good morning, DJ Envy. Hey, how was everything yesterday? Well, I hung out with, with Envy for a little while. We went shopping together. Entirely too long. We went to Century 21. Shout out to my girl, Heather. What up, Heather? Good morning. Yeah, she's a personal shopper there, so she makes it easier. Now, if you ever need... Stop the music for a second. Stop. <laughs> if you ever need anything... When I mean, any, I haven't been to Central 21 probably since I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. My mom used to shop there. But if you ever need anything, I'm talking about they have everything in Central 21 from if you're into True Religion, if you're into J Brand Jeans, if you're into Versace, 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 Versace. They have everything yeah, they have at every Century 21. So, I mean, I got. They have Chanel, they have YSL, they have everything. everything. I got everything for my kids. My kids are set for the summer. So, thank you, Heather, and thank you to the good people over there at Century 21. Ah, what up, Charlemagne? Y'all went to Century 21 without me? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. went yesterday. Look at that, boy. You don't care nothing about me. No, I got paid on the 15th and got a little money to spend. Yeah. Why you, you know you can hit her up yourself. Well, though. Heather had a message for you. She says, they don't have any more clothes that look like Jay-Z, so try uh, in <laughs> September. I went there one time and was going to buy some white jeans, and she said, you are not Dominican. <laughs> 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 she sold me them same white jeans. Yeah, it's true. Um, I, I definitely had an extra $100, too. Yeah, but shout to uh, $100 to take a long way to 21. I know. That's all I'm going to spend, too. But we had fun. We had a good time. We bought a lot yes. of things, saved a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And last night, I was also at uh, Club Glass in Queens. Shout out to everybody that came out to Club Glass. Queens. Ain't that where you're from? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Now, today, Nick Cannon will be joining us. Nick! We'll get to kick it with Nick Cannon. He has Wild and Out that's coming back on TV. He came actually back last yeah, week. Yeah, it's back. back. Record-breaking numbers. It did uh, 1.3 million people. It comes wow. on every Tuesday at 11 on MTV2. Wow. So we'll kick it with Nick Cannon at 7. And, of course, the iHeartRadio Music Festival out in Vegas. You want to go? You want to go? You want to go? We'll pay for you. We'll pay for your flights. We'll pay for your room and board. Hey, that comes, um, that, that happens. I think we have two, two chances this morning, right? Eight and nine. Okay, so keep it locked. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 105.1. Let's go. All right, we'll talk to us a little bit more then. <laughs> Until I get the technical difficulties going on. Now, Charlamagne, what you do yesterday before, besides sleep? I seen you posting pictures with Mac Miller and uh, DJ Khaled. Oh, don't Mac Miller have a show tonight? Yeah, you do, man. Tell you, Michael. Mac Miller has a show at the uh, Hammerstein tonight. That's all I did, though. I, was, I, I kicked it with Khaled for a little minute. I was with Mac Miller for a little minute. Then I um, went to the gym. That's uh, all. Now it's working again. All right, we'll be back in a second. It's the Breakfast Club. Spell 105 one is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yeah. Don't forget Nick Cannon will be joining us at 7 a.m. Also, if you want to go to Vegas to our iHeartRadio Music Festival to see Justin Timberlake, J. Cole, and more, you got two chances this morning, so definitely keep it locked. But up next, we got front page news, G. Yes, and we are going to follow up some more with the juror from the George Zimmerman trial. B-37? Yes, juror B-37 was actually trying to write a book. And therefore has come forward and she's telling what her opinions were and what was going on mm -hmm. with the whole jury. Also, we'll follow up with Rachel Jantel, the 19-year-old that was Trayvon Martin's friend who testified. Okay. That's the African-American woman, correct? Salute to Rachel. Okay. Rachel's a G. Yesterday you said she's the one that messed it up. She did, but her delivery may not be on point, but she speaks a lot of common sense. But you have to be from the hood to understand. Well, the juror will tell you exactly how Rachel, in her opinion, messed things up. Okay. Yes. All right, we'll get into that next. Keep a lot right now. Let's take a quick look at Duncan Donuts Traffic Report. George Washington Bridge, five minutes on the upper level. Lincoln Tunnel, five minutes in. Holland Tunnel looks okay. And Tavisee Bridge <clears throat> is good money. It's Power 105. One is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's get in the front page news. Now, in sports, the All-Star Game is tonight at City Field. That's Shea Stadium, the old Shea Stadium at Met Stadium. I thought I was watching that last night when I was in the gym. I couldn't tell the difference. No. I think it was the home run derby. That was the home run derby. I, I can't pronounce the guy's name who won, but I just know Robinson Cano didn't win for the Yankees. Uh, let me get our uh, resident uh, Puerto Rican here. Uh, what was his name? Yoannis Cespedes. <laughs> There was no way I was going to be able to pronounce that. You, you have could a try, though. I would love to hear that. No, I'm not going to try that. Now, um, Ron Artest looks like he signed on to be a Nick for the next two years. So why did he tweet out uh, where Brooklyn at? <laughs> <laughs> he did. He was taunting the Nets. Yeah, he was taunting the Nets. Oh, okay. But he, right. but he's a New York Nick. He signed for two years. Maybe he's just a little confused. You know, Maybe Ron, he thought the 
Barclays Center was for the Knicks. Yeah, maybe. You know, it's Ron Artest. That's all I mean. Yeah, Jeez. Ron, just come to New York and focus on basketball, man. Don't get that little bug to start rapping again. Don't nobody want to hear all that. Leave Ron Ron alone. Now, Jura uh, B37 speaks. Yes, Jura B37 is one of the six jurors who acquitted George Zimmerman in mm-hmm. the Trayvon Martin case. And Jura B37 was ori- originally trying to write a book about the trial. But then she pulled back from that because of everybody on social media and beyond that kind of going in on her. She actually had a lot of sympathy for George Zimmerman and very little for Trayvon Martin during an interview that she did with Anderson Cooper on CNN. Uh She felt that George Zimmerman, his heart was in the right place and it was just displaced by the vandalism in the neighborhood. So here is a little bit of what she had to say with Anderson Cooper. Whose voice do you think it was in the 911 call? I think it was George Zimmerman's. Did everybody in the jury agree with that? All but probably one. And what made you think it was George Zimmerman's voice? Because of the evidence that he was the one that had gotten beaten. So you think because he was the one who had cuts, had abrasions, he was the one getting hit, he was the one calling for help? Well, because of the witnesses of John Good saw Trayvon on top of George, not necessarily hitting him because it was so dark he couldn't see, but he saw blows down towards George. Mm. Well, she said that his heart was in the right place. Everything just went terribly wrong. She also said that she feels like both of them were responsible for the situation they got themselves into. And, uh, you know, a lot of people mm. were going in on her on Twitter saying that she was a racist. She said at one point they were talking about the term creepy ass and then the negative term for white people. I can't believe that didn't trend. And she said, I don't think it's really racial. I think it's just the everyday life, the type of life that they live and how they're living in the environment that they're living in. Oh, wow. So that her they is black people is what she's referring to. Of course. Yes. And she said uh, three of the jurors were very determined at first to find George Zimmerman guilty of something. But they were struggling to understand instructions that they said were confusing. And that's when they reached the consensus. And she said, I want everybody to know that we put everything into everything to get this verdict. All right. Rachel Jantel also did an interview yesterday. She's only 19 years old and she was in the witness box. and. Mm-hmm. She was very confident when she did this interview, and she said the verdict was BS, and that Zimmerman approached Trayvon because he was black, and it was definitely racial. We ain't got no sound bites from Rachel. Now, what else she say? Come on now. I thought Rachel had a gold grill in her mouth the whole time, but that was her braces. Oh, you still? So she had the uh, black f- French tips. Mm-hmm. But she was on there talking a lot of common sense, man. She speaks with a lot of common sense. She just uh, doesn't deliver it correctly. But I would not let her poor delivery overshadow the truth. I believe she speaks. Okay. Yes. yes. Right. And that's front page news. Now, tell them why you're mad. 800-585-1051. If you're upset, you need to vent, you could call us right now. Maybe something pissed you off. Maybe you're having a bad morning, or maybe you just don't like something. Call us up right now. It's your time to vent. 800-585-1051. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 1051. It's over. Hey, yo, it's the dog, DMX. You pissed off? You mad? Call 1-800-585-1051 on the Breakfast Club. Power 1051. Breakfast Club, bitches. JC, tell them why you're mad. Man, I'm mad because the NFL season take too long to come around, man. We, we only like three weeks away, ain't we? Yeah, but I'm saying, though, we got all this basketball. We still got the spring games and all this. Well, where the NFL at, man? Listen, we got Trayvon Martin to distract us until then, man. We're going to talk, <laughs> talk about this George Zimmerman case right up until the first game of the, the uh, season. I see. All right, bro. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Bianca. Bianca, tell him why you mad, mama. I'm mad because I had homework to do today, and I thought it was due this morning, but come to find out, it's not due until Friday. So I was just so pissed off because I did all night doing it. Well, at least you got it done. You ain't got to worry about it no more. Yeah, you're ahead of the curve now. Anyway, I just want to tell you guys, I love you guys. I watch y'all Monday through Friday. Y'all are the best show in the world. You mean like, listen to us, right? No, she probably watches Thank you. Online. Thank you. Oh, everybody on Twitter, like, I love you guys. I'm always tweeting you guys. I'm like y'all promotion here at the UCS here <laughs> in Florida. Well, we appreciate you. you. Mama. Thank you. Love you guys. Have a great Thanks. morning. Have a good day in class. You too. Thank you. Monet, tell them why you mad, Mama. Um, well, I'm mad at the um, prosecution um, team for the Trayvon Martin case, especially Don West. Um, when he did the press conference after the case, he just seems very ignorant and nonchalant. And it just kind of really made me mad. And I just want to put him on glass. Definitely. Now, 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 what about that Instagram picture him and his daughters took where they said, Yeah, uh, that's, vic- that's exactly what I'm talking victory about. Victory ice cream amazing. cones. Victory over it stupid was, people. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And I, I just really feel that even throughout the whole entire uh, court case that he was being very unprofessional and, and not an officer of the court. Thank you very much, Mom. You have a great day. You too. 
Tell them why you're mad. 800-585-1051. If you're upset, you need to vent. Call us right now. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Yo, this is DMX. And you know what makes me mad? <laughs> Ask for the truth, but can't handle the truth. All right? Now tell them why you mad on the Breakfast Club. Power 1051. <laughs> Breakfast Club, bitches. Angelica, tell them why you mad. I'm mad because yesterday I was watching CNN when Rachel was expressing how she was feeling about Trayvon. And then I go on Twitter and everybody's slandering her. I'm like, this would be no whole course is just voting for Trayvon Martin and being on his side. And voting. You just go and slander her. Well, you know, she's from the hood, so people don't understand the hood dialect that she was speaking, that's all. But, I mean, to me, I think she got a lot of common sense. That's why she's hard for a lot of people to understand. Right, exactly. And I'm not going to let her poor delivery, you know, uh, overshadow the truth I feel like she speaks, you know? Yeah, she's smart. It's just, you know, it's a hard time. Now, I'm not going to really say express. smart now. I'm just going to say she I mean, got a lot of common like, sense. Stop yeah, it. Exactly that. Yeah, exactly. It's hard for her to express herself, too. Thank yeah, you, she got an underbite. B, tell him why you mad, B. Man, my girl moved out of state talking about we can make it work. No, it's not working, is it? No, it don't work. Well, this relationship don't work, man. Where she moved to? How far is she? She by, well, I'm in Mississippi. She in Baton Rouge. That's like maybe a two-hour drive. Oh, my gosh. That's not that That bad. is not long distance, That's man. That's not bad Knock at it all. off. <laughs> Them boys from Louisiana knocking that wall out right now. Oh, stop yeah, it. Yeah, and, and they got that HIV over that bag. Oh, stop, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop Have a stop good morning, it. man. <laughs> Hey, that's what a dude will tell his girl so she don't cheat. Boy, they got that HIV where you at bad now. Oh, man. Go on over them ladies if you want to. Hello, who's this? <laughs> Yo, this is hard as hell. Hard as hell. You say your penis you is hard as hell. His name is nah, hard as up? hell. Tell what's him why you mad, bro. What's up? I'm mad that y'all really answered. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't actually expecting y'all to answer. So hold on. You called somebody's phone but wasn't expecting them to answer. Basically, I'm a fan of the show. I watch all y'all vlogs and everything, so... Thank you. This is why black people can't get ahead, right? right? I don't know. Why, I don't know how how this fact is in the black people can't get in the head, but it does. This is pretty close. Well, tell them why you're mad. We do every morning at six a.m. Now, Angela Yee. Yes. We got rumors coming up. Yes, and we're going to talk about Chris Brown. His probation was revoked. The judge revoked his probation in the Rihanna beating case, but he's going to remain a free man for now. But I'll tell you what went down. Okay. Well, we find out at six fifty. Keep it locked. It's the Breakfast Club on Power One Hundred Five One. Spow 1051 is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Where is our guy, Trey Songs? I ain't heard from You know, he ain't been really too active in a minute. We ain't seen Trey in a long time. You Not know, since. he's working. He died in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and we ain't seen him since. Okay. Well, let's get into the rumors. Chris Brown, it looks like he might be back in jail. Well, let's talk about it. Listen up. This just in. All the guys. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Well, the judge has revoked Chris Brown's probation in the Rihanna beating case. That's crazy. Right now, he's free, though, on his own recognizance. But if the judge does determine that he violated his probation, he could face up to four years in prison. This is all for that hit-and-run case he had. Remember when he hit that woman's car and she said he gave, him the wrong, he gave her the wrong information? Well, Chris Brown said on Twitter... I did everything I was supposed to do during the so-called hit and run. I provided the correct info. There were no injuries or damages. Come on. <laughs> Lord, please, please touch the heart of whoever got that chicken foot buried in Barbados. Nice please man. touch their heart so they can dig that chicken foot up and take the root off that boy named Chris Brown. Uh, Jesus. All bad for him. All right, and Jimmy Kimmel got married over the weekend, and actress Gabourey Sidibe, better known as Precious to a lot of you, actually played a prank on him. He married his comedic writer, Molly McNerney, and she was in on it. She showed up to the wedding in a white wedding gown. She had a black Escalade, and a attendant hold her train as she was ushered into the ceremony. You said she looked like a black Escalade. No, stop it. What did you say? <laughs> stop it. Say that. Foul. Now, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Howard Stern, all of those people were there, and they were witnessing the fun. They feel like this is going to be a skit on a Jimmy Kimmel live show. Mm -mm. He's too stupid. It, Charlemagne. All right, and speaking of weddings, LeBron has sent out his wedding invites him in Savannah, and everything is so top secret, they didn't list a time or a location. Instead, what you have to do, and we, we do know the wedding's going to be in San Diego somewhere because of the save the date. They're going to have a welcome barbecue. That's going to be September 13th. And then they have a farewell brunch that Sunday. And uh, guests have to call a top secret phone number by August 1st. After you call the number, someone will get back to you with the actual details of the date. So they want nobody to know where it is. Salute to them, man. Marriage is a beautiful thing, man. Right. And uh, by the way, Jay-Z is going to go on a Magna Carta Holy Grail European tour this fall. He did announce his plans yesterday. So mm -hmm. uh, that's going to start on October 13th in the U.K. in Manchester Arena. All that's right? A, and that's a very dope album. Uh, that album has a lot of replay value to me. I, I, I was listening to what people were tweeting about the album. 
Mm-hmm. You were listening or reading? Or reading before I actually listened to it, and you guys are all wrong. That's a dope album. <laughs> I think Magna Carta Holy Grail is dope. Heaven is my record. Okay. All right, and that is your rumor report. I'm Angela Yee. Thank you, Angela Yee. Now, when we come back, Nick Cannon will be joining us. We'll chop it up with Nick Cannon. Of course, Wild and Out is back, so we'll talk to him about that. Also, it comes on tonight, actually. What time? Uh, 11 p.m. on MTV2. Okay. Also, the iHeartRadio Music Festival. You got two chances to win. We'll fly you out to Vegas. You get to see Justin Timberlake, J. Cole, Bruno Mars, and a host, uh, a host of other people. You have two chances this morning at 8 and at 9, so keep it locked. But Nick Cannon up next. Right now, let's take a quick look at Dunkin' Donuts Traffic Report. George Washington Bridge, 25 minutes on on the upper level, 10 minutes on the lower level. Lincoln Tunnel 15 in, Highland Tunnel 15 in, and Tapestry Bridge, the road work is cleared both ways. 656 Woo! is Power 1051. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Please unroot Chris Brown, man. Please no, take the voodoo it. off that boy, man. Please. Now, Angela Yee, she's so foul. Yesterday she sent uh, Charlemagne and I a text, and it was Fred the Godson naked in a, pool, in a uh, bathtub. <laughs> that wasn't funny. Why is that supposed to be funny? Why did you send that? <laughs> Yeah, that I was with him. Well, let's not act like Fred was just sitting in a bathtub. He put Rev Run flow. He was, <laughs> he was imitating Rev it Run. It wasn't with, a jacuzzi. No. It was no bubbles around. No. It wasn't. I have a problem with people taking baths. What? Yeah, me too. You know why? Because the water gets all dirty. Right. So it's like you're just washing in dirty water after the first two, three minutes. Take a shower, man. That water was Taking dirty a bath too. is not hot. No, man. You can't. You, you really post. Where to, does the dirt go? Back on your skin. Exactly. If you want to take a bath, take a bath after you take a shower because you're just soaking in the tub, maybe for your joints or something. You can't get clean in the bathtub, man. All right. Nick Cannon's up next. Keep it locked. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Good morning. Power 1051 is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. And you guys are foul. Right. We got a special guest in the building. Another you special guest? The and you play his video with R. With, Kelly well, Gigolo. Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. Uh, fur jersey on. We just wanted to remind Nick where he come from. Because I've been watching Nick the past couple weeks. You know what I realized? What's, What's that? that? You famous. You're not black famous. You famous famous. Ah. Uh, you on Good Morning America, the Today Show. Only reason why I say I'm not famous is because my wife is famous. I'm not famous. And I don't know. It's a lot of people that are married to famous people that they don't care about. <laughs> That's true. They That's seem true. to care about you a lot. That's it. It. Hey, the, the white folks enjoy me. Absolutely. They, they do. do. <laughs> well, how's wife? You but then you can still do stuff yeah. on BT. So yeah, it's exactly. All good. I, you, know. you can get back to the hood every exactly. now and then. Go do some charity work. Pop up on 106. Exactly. <laughs> Wifey's good though. Wifey's good. Now yeah, what happened? Yeah. She fell or? Yeah, we was doing a video with Young Jeezy, and she was on this like marble platform. Right. She had been like she had this gown on, so she didn't really have full control over her body, and she kind of leaned forward to like reach out to Jeezy, and just right. fell right on her. Damn, uh, Jeezy didn't catch her. Nah, it was too focused was- on the camera. <laughs> 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 well, you focus. know what? And I believe that on Nick Cannon, he was directing. He yes. probably told her to make oh. that move. I didn't tell her to do that. She should. She, she, she was sue you. If you see the footage, I jumped to try to to save her, but it. it <laughs> you know she gonna, go she gonna sue you. You know that, right? Exactly. <laughs> she can, and but she wouldn't get nothing. <laughs> so it don't she even might matter. Get some of her you don't say money. nothing to Jeezy like Jeezy. Now come on, this is Mariah Carey falling. You just stand there. You no, don't want to touch that man's wife. It's crazy. She was so gangster about it. She fell, shoulder popped out all crazy, cracked her rib, and she was like, pop it back in. Let's do the shot. And Jeezy was like, nah, nah, little mama, you got to lay down and relax. (laughs) Got her up. She was like, you get back in there, finish the video. She on the phone with me the whole time talking about what shots as her arms. They pop it back in at the hospital. Bandaged her all up. She came back to the video and did two more hours with her and Jeezy. Like, Super trooper, right? There. That's crazy. Wow. That's and crazy. in the meantime, you have Wildin' Out back. Yeah. Yeah, we, you got in a going? little trouble on there. <laughs> that's, that's Twitter stuff. The man. Beehive went crazy they on you. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, like, it was like eight people that just was constantly tweeting. It was hilarious. There's to me. two people you can't really ever diss. That's Beyonce and Mariah. Why is Beyonce off limits? I, it, well, no, no, I'm, I'm saying on Twitter because if you say something, you say Twitter anything. Can, those I, lambs. They go crazy. Nicki Minaj, Lambs. too. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Yeah, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, Nicki Minaj. And the Eminem fans go crazy. Oh, yeah. Team Eminem Shady. Fans. Well, look at, at Mariah, though. She's doing quite well. And I have to say, I wasn't sure it was going to happen. You know, she has a song out, though. It's number one in yeah. multiple countries. Yeah, album on the way. Yeah. The two of you work so hard, though. Like, both of you have, have suffered from overworking your Man, yeah. who's watching the kids? Me. I was, <laughs> no, I was, that's why I was like five minutes late. I was just over there. I, yeah, I know they are. You left the kids in the car by themselves? No, I live across the street. <laughs> <laughs> so so I you have the kids at home by themselves? Nah, Mariah's over there, but I, but because she's kind of, you know, she can't like mm-hmm. fix food and stuff, I had to fix them some snacks. And, and we heard the rumors too. What was that? We heard the rumors that she cheated on you with Miguel. 
Oh, yeah, that's true. All right, hold up. We'll, we'll talk about this when we come back. You just going to let Miguel smash like that? When we come back, we got more with Nick Cannon. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 1051. It's Power 1051. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We have Nick Cannon in the building. Now, we heard the rumors. What was that? We heard the rumors that she cheated on you with Miguel. We seen the pictures. That's right. the pictures. That's another DJ envy. I made this up. Media, take, no, media take out. Wasn't it out there? It was rumors. I never nah, saw that. Because remember, they shot the remix video, that. and he was <laughs> over there. Uh, they were swimming in the ocean with each other, and that, was, that was part of the, the video. video. Well, I don't but know. But I'm not really intimidated by Miguel. I see Miguel playing Miguel. with the kids and everything. <laughs> He's going to put that there. <laughs> he might leg drop. You better be yeah, careful. That That's somebody. No, those guys that you think you shouldn't be intimidated that by is other true. ones. I was. I used to be one of those guys. No, listen. I love Miguel, but that's the first time I ever heard a rumor about Miguel and a woman. <laughs> no, but Nick Cannon knows he was one of those guys. They're like, oh, it's just yeah, Nick Cannon. Nah, it's just it's Nick, fun. and then you swoop in. Knocking down Kim K. Yeah. Knocking down uh, so many of them. Celebrity Banks. How did you get with Mariah? Like, what was that first date like? Because we had Jay-Z up here, and Jay-Z says 18 layers of people you got to get to to get to him. Yeah. How many layers did it take you it, to get to Mariah? It took quite a few. I kept telling people. People would ask me who my celebrity crush was, mm -hmm. and I would be like, yo, Mariah. I was telling everybody I knew that I was connected to her, like that Brat, was. everybody, mm -hmm. Benny Medina. Dina at the time, I was just like, yo, I just wanted to holler at her, let her know. And everybody's like, man, she way out your league. I was like, damn it, man. <laughs> just give me five minutes with her. I promise she'll be my chick. And then, you know, ultimately she heard that I had been talking about it. That and, really works. Yeah, she was like, yo, I heard all the nice things you've been saying. I was like, yo, give me an opportunity. I'll get it cracking. Oh and then gosh. probably about like two, two years after I saw her for the first time and she was like, Acknowledge my presence, mm -hmm. then you know she asked me to be in one of her videos, and then from there, Charlamagne does that all the time. He'll talk about a girl, but he does it with too many different women. <laughs> he does with everybody. You gotta He's focus focused. on He's one. Just keep throwing it out there. One day it's Melanie Fiona, the next day it's Kelly Rowland, the next day it's Serena Williams. Patty LaBelle. Patty. The next day it's Patty LaBelle. all over the place. Trying to catch Patty before she passes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm saying, that I don't know if so I got rude. a couple Why more years. <laughs> I'm dirty. This guy's crazy. You ever get mad on Wild? Like, I'm watching Wild and Out, man. Conceited <laughs> hit you with a line that hurt. Your whole career is being carried by yeah, Mariah. Mariah. But I mean, that's People say that all the time. Yeah. Nah, yeah. They, it, it, the way he delivered it, I was like, oh, you sit on the couch like, oh. Charlemagne said some disrespectful stuff on Wildin' Out to me. He talked about my kids. <gasps> I did. You talked about his kids? There. Well, let me tell you what Charlemagne did. <laughs> <laughs> Charlemagne probably quoted Biggie or Jay-Z. He did. Oh, he, he did. He quoted really? somebody. He quoted DMX. DMX. Remember, yeah. he was like, you whack, you twisted. <laughs> he was like, you got some dough. He Luckily, he didn't say your girl's a hoe. He said, you got some dough. And them kids ain't yours and everybody knows. <laughs> wow. I was like, like after, like I was good with it, but when I got off the stage, I was like, yo, you all right? You all right? <laughs> <laughs> that wild style stage is pressure. Like, you, yeah. I'm not a rapper. Even if I was, you still got to think of something witty to say. I can't do it. Yeah. How do you stay faithful with all these white women coming at you? Man. I mean, I know you got Mariah, but I know Man. you got all these Nubian white queens. They be out there, ain't they? <laughs> no, but I would think, do you guys ever have a conversation like, okay, you know, because according to Charlamagne, all men cheat. That is true. Right, so I'm gonna agree with him on that. So have you ever had that conversation? Not. Like, like <laughs> nah, but I'm gonna see. <laughs> you get a pass. I talk about. He changed his life. I talk about. Yeah, because I've done it in the past, mm -hmm. and I'm saying I'm. I haven't at this moment, and I hope I don't. But that's the thing about me and my wife. We actually have conversations like that. She be like, look, she has a quite many opportunities to cheat on you. That's as what well. she's saying. She was <laughs> like, yo, I, you let me know. I can go get a billionaire tomorrow and be easy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you right. Let me just go ahead and relax. And you know, let her talk down to you like that. It's the truth, the <laughs> truth, facts only. It's like, damn. <laughs> but that's the thing, when you can be upfront and honest and be like... The problem is the line, when men are not telling you what they're really So you don't have a problem with monogamy, you have a problem with honesty. I, mm, I would say that each person is different. So this is my question to you. If you, you got to do, right, mm -hmm. what would be more offensive to you? If he gets a lap dance at a strip club or if he spends 20 minutes a day on the phone with a chick? Well, I don't mind lap dances at strip clubs. That's fine. But I don't think there should be any type of... What's the um, difference? I don't She's think there should naked be any... on Same me. thing. First of all, a girl puts her mouth on your, your thing. You could end up getting herpes. You can get herpes. That is not true. Stop saying that. No, you cannot get herpes with clothes. Kanye you can do your clothes. You <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of Kanye, did you send him and Kim K a gift? I sent them. <laughs> hold up, hold up. We'll find out what you sent them when we come back. Keep it locked. Nick Cannon's in the building. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 105.1. Power 105.1.
The Breakfast Club, you know what it is. Nick Cannon's here breaking out chairs. Yes. <laughs> we do need to get some new chairs. We're wilding yeah. out. I'm you know, we had, y'all some new chairs. We had Jay-Z sitting in that chair. No, I heard that. He I, had, came. I had to remind him, like, yo, you used to sit on the stoops in Marcy, so don't complain. Yeah. No, <laughs> More with Nick Cannon when we come back. is The Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Power 1051 is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Nick Cannon is in the building. Now, uh, we were just talking, wanted to know if you sent Kim Kardashian and Kanye West a present for their baby. I sent them an uh, email. I, just, I thought it was inappropriate to send them a gift. Why? I thought about it. You should have sent some hand-me-downs from the... <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> no, because I really did think about it. And, you know, because we said... You know, like, J and B, all, like, when they had their baby, we always... We sit, we exchange gifts, and Kanye is my man, and, of course, I know Kim. Yeah, we so know you know Kim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you hit it so, first. But that was the thing. Should I... No, you what can't do that. that. So That's, I just sent them, you no. know, congratulations. He doesn't want his, her ex sending a present. Sorry. But if I'm sending it to, because Kanye is my man. So if I'm sending it to him, this mm. is still his first child. That's true. That he's probably thinking in his head, is this a jab? That is a jab. Definitely, <laughs> this is a jab. That, I would have definitely thought is that. Was a jab? Trying to jab me? <laughs> have you seen Ray J since he put out Hit It First and walked up to him and said, you lying. Nigga. I hit it before you. <laughs> Actually, I think Ray J might have hit it before me. Yeah. Oh, no. I think he might. I, based off of time, time I, I think it might have been around the same time. It could have been simultaneously. Yeah, Kim, she's a she's a wild girl. <laughs> what you're saying? Hold on. What you're saying is what you're saying is Kanye needs to get a blood test. Is what you're saying? That's what I got from that whole. What do you think about Kanye? But that's the thing. Kanye and Kim, they've been messing around for a while. People, yeah, sneakily. Yeah, sneakily. That's a new word. Sneakily. That's a real word. Sneakily. It is. But I think they're perfect for each other. They work. Why? Because they're the two type of people that they know what they want out of life and they want like some of the same stuff. And they've been through attention. a lot of pressures. Like, they like love attention. attention. Right. They about their paper. Mm -hmm. They'll get out and they get it the way they want. And then on a, like a personal level, like they both been through a lot. I mean, when you think about her losing her father, him losing his mom, like mm -hmm. they got stuff they can really sit and talk about and build with. You think yeah. Kanye would do well out at this point? I would love to because we were, oh man. Because uh, that's the thing. He can't handle that. I, I think, think he's too he sensitive. Can't, he, he couldn't did, even do, he, he didn't did even want to do Saturday Night Live with them making fun of Kim. He had all kinds of rules when he did that. I think people take him too seriously and that's it. Like, they protect him, but when he's really, when he's with people he know, I mean, I'm pretty sure y'all talk to him. No, he, he actually said nah. me and didn't talk to him. He didn't, he didn't talk to me now. He that different? Yeah, well. He's I mean, a Kardashian now, nigga. Not, he not, not, he not, not. every morning, you know? Last time I seen yeah, he was just as normal, and it wasn't even that long ago. Like, he was, like, Kanye. Well, you're way more famous than MB. Just a little <laughs> more famous. Yeah, what if Kanye said, all right, I'm going to do Wild and Out, but no Kim K jokes? So when I was on the show, they was making jokes about you hitting Kim K. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a th we tell them don't say this this and this they but then, anyway. I, I can't control what them right. dudes and say. You, know what? You, just, they, you just agree to it and then do yeah, it and let the, people do what they want anyway. The first time Kanye did the show, they said no jokes about his accident. Mm -hmm. First thing dude came out was like, <laughs> yo, you, you Jay Z punk and your cheeks are swollen like a chipmunk <laughs> and all that stuff. And, like, and Kanye just rolled with it. He killed everybody. So that's why I think he would come and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, and that comes on tonight at what time? What is it? Eleven. Eleven tonight on MTV Two. MTV Two. You have, can check out Wildin' Out. Has yeah. anybody ever tried to rob you in all your years? In since I've been famous, mm -hmm. I don't think since I've been famous. We've had, like, my studio got robbed a couple of times. But, yeah, before that, because I was trying to be a little knucklehead, like, mm -hmm. back in the day. Like, you know, my, my uh, stepfather was one of the uh, biggest drug dealers in uh, San Diego when I was young. So, but that's what, you know, I used to want want that life. So, I, when I found out I wasn't really about that life, that's when I started entertaining. When did you realize you weren't about that life? <laughs> probably, like, 16 years old. Probably after a couple of my homeboys got killed and all that type of stuff. And I was like, yo, I got to get out of this area. And that's when I went to Hollywood. So did you go to college? I did, but, like, I didn't finish. I'm actually about to go to NYU uh, in the fall. Now that I got kids. You got kids. You, gotta tell you know what I mean? I got to tell my kids exactly. to go to school and stuff. And I got to finish. That's one of those things, like, I feel like I got to get my mind back doing that. What are you going to go to school that. for? I'm going for music, so it's going to be... Oh, Lord, you're going to fail that course. All right. Nick, All you're right. going to fail that course. Tonight, 11 p.m., we're going to music. Nick Cannon. I'm a minor in theology. All right, Nick Cannon, we appreciate you stopping in. <laughs> I'm going to fail that course. <laughs> it's the breakfast I'm going to get that paperwork. That's it's, all I'm doing. It's Power 1051, Nick Cannon. Yes. Yeah. Power 1051 is the Breakfast Club. Good morning, and this portion of the Breakfast Club is powered by KarmaLoop.com. Now, uh, 2 chains. how much does he charge per verse? Let's find out. Listen up. It's just in. All the guys. Guys. The Rumor Report. Guys. Guys. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's The Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club on Power 105.1. Well, 2 chains recently said that 
he does charge $100,000 for a verse. And he said there are some artists who still haven't released the features that he did for them. So he said that money goes a long way, though. He said, I'm going to come to your video, check it out. I'm going to change clothes twice. They're never going to see that outfit again. It's going to be high-end fashion. It's going to be swag. I'm going to give you bars. I'm going to wear fancy glasses and chains you've never seen before. I can help you. He said, you get charisma. You get girls at the video shoot that come to your video shoot because they know I'm going to be there. So here's your chance to get in. But who has $100,000 for a verse? Uh, these labels, right? These labels got budgets for stuff like that, right? No, they don't have no $100,000. That's a lot of money. Man. Oh, I don't know. All right, and speaking of a lot of money, Kanye West, he did a joint venture with ABC Clothing. Mm-hmm. And it sold out in a few minutes as soon as it was available. Now, they have some T-shirts. Those T-shirts are about $120. Man, F you $120 T-shirts, Kanye. I'll go to Target and get me a Mosimo for $9.99. Mosimo. Yep. The hoodie is $280 and the jeans are $265. That's not too crazy. Man, if you spend $120 for a t-shirt, ask yourself who's the new slave. Is this the same guy over there that buys $1,200 <laughs> sneakers over there? Who you talking to? You. I don't buy no $1,200 sneakers. How much sneakers you we, we cost to wear? I got on some Concords right no, now. Today you got on Concords. That Concord I stole from somebody. Charlamagne, you got Balenciaga yeah, Balenciaga's. sneakers. Balenciaga. I don't know what you talking about. I don't got no damn Balenciaga. I don't even know how to spell Balenciaga. All right, I'll let pronounce. me post a picture of them. Are you, are you really Those were T-Rolls I had on. Yeah, Those were the damn yeah, Tiger T-Rolls no, that Reebok sent up no, here. No, they wasn't. Those were T-Rolls. No, All right. They wasn't. <laughs> now, J-Lo, J-Lo is under fire, and they're saying that she has been performing for the world's worst thugs. That is according to uh, the Human Rights Foundation. She made about $9 million in the past two years, two years doing these performances. She had a $2.5 million gig last month at Turkmenistan's human, uh, for the Turkmenistan's human rights violating president. They're saying that he has one of the most repressive regimes of all time. So would you do that? Perform for these terrible dictators and the world's worst thugs if you're getting paid millions of dollars. Yep. You know, all these hood grimy clubs we go to from Jersey <laughs> to Philly right. to South Carolina, you're damn right I'm going to be out there. Absolutely. We out there and hosting for these goons that's out there murdering people. I'm going to be right there with them tyrants. You would for real? And you would too. Breakfast Club, $1 million game. <laughs> 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 and if not, we're going to find us, Angela. You know. <laughs> anyway, Chris Jenner debuted her new talk show on, on Fox yesterday. And you know what she did? You know how she started it off? And this is the corniest thing in the world. Wow. She came out with a baby. Everybody thought the baby was Northwest because she kept saying she was going to debut the baby on talk show, blah, 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 blah. Turns out that the baby belonged to her stylist. Why would you come out with the baby pretending that it is Northwest? Because you know that's what everybody's mm-hmm. going to think. Mm-hmm. That is Kim Kardashian and Kanye's baby, and it turns out to be your stylist. Who created the hype? That is so corny. And Kris Jenner is the biggest pimp in the industry. She pimped the kids, so why wouldn't she pimp her grandkids? This is big business, baby. That's all this is. Anyway, that is your rumor report. I'm Angela Yee. Thank you, Angela Yee. Charlemagne, 804 donkey of the day. Yes, and some donkey of the days just sell themselves, and I'm really trying to stop using the N-word, but this young lady is making it hard for me. Her name is Brittany Harris. She's from uh, West Palm, Florida. Miss Harris, please come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with you. Okay, well, we do that at 804. Right now, let's take a quick look at Dunkin' Donuts traffic report. Now, don't forget, also, you want to go to Vegas, the iHeartRadio Music Festival? Well, that happens at 8 and 9 o'clock. We'll fly you down there. We'll pay for your hotel. You get to see artists like Justin Timberlake, J. Cole, Bruno Mars, and more. But right now, let's take a quick look at Dunkin' Donuts traffic report. George Washington Bridge, 25 minutes on the upper level, 15 on the lower Lincoln Tunnel, 25 in Holland Tunnel, 20 in Tapestry Bridge. Looks pretty good. <laughs> I was born a donkey. It's the donkey of the day. That's time for the donkey of the day. That's pretty funny. Which Charlamagne the devil? Possibly. <laughs> the Breakfast Club on Power 105.1. Yes, donkey of the day for Tuesday, July 16th goes to a young... <sighs> See, I'm trying to stop saying the N-word, so how do I refer to her? I can't say lady. Definitely not a woman. I'll just say ignorant person with dark pigments named Brittany Harris from West Palm Beach, Florida. Would you like to hear what she did? Well, no need to keep you waiting. Let's hear the news story straight from WPTV News Channel 5 in West Palm Beach, Florida. A West Palm Beach mother is facing child neglect charges after police say she left her children in a car while she watched Sunday's Little Wayne concert at the Crujan Amphitheater. Mm-mm-mm. A Crujan employee reportedly found Brittany Harris's five <clears throat> and three-year-old children in the parking lot. 
Black people, black people, black people. I'm trying to stop using the N-word, but y'all make it hard for a brother. You mean to tell me that you would leave your five and three-year-old in a car in a parking lot with an estimated 9,000 young money-minded mother F who's high off weed and drinking lean? What part of your brain says, I'm going to just run into this Lil Wayne concert and be right back real quick while my kids sit in this parking lot? My daughter is five, and I won't leave her downstairs by herself for three minutes to watch Disney Junior. Mm -mm. Things happen way too fast nowadays, but this irresponsible bitch Britney Harris yeah. thinks it's okay to leave her kids in the car while she goes into a little Wayne concert you wanted to hear Millie that bad Cushion alcohol couldn't wait they play it on the radio every hour you just had to see it live and why couldn't you get a babysitter grandparents were busy all your homegirls at the little Wayne concert leaving their kids in the car too I know you couldn't afford a babysitter because you spent all your money on an outfit from Rainbow for the concert. I know you got your feet and nails done, probably got the YMCMB logo on your fingernails, and I know you spent some money to get them edges blended better. Not to mention Indian Remy is not cheap. Brittany, you have to get your priorities together. Kids before concerts, your little ones come before Little Wayne. And now that the Department of Families and Children is taking your kids away, you have plenty of time to think about the error in your ways, but a dumbass like you is probably looking at your kids being taken away as a blessing. Probably on Twitter saying dumb stuff like everything happens for a reason. God got a plan. Yeah, God do got a plan, but not for you, Brittany Harris. God is ignoring you. Your life is being engineered by Satan. Leaving your kids in the car to go to a Little Wayne concert? That's nothing but the devil. Give Brittany Harris the biggest hee-haw. I read that story. I thought it was a joke. No, not at all. Yeah. She That's really left crazy. her kids to go see Lil Wayne. Listen, I keep telling y'all, we're going to have to start giving people the credit they deserve for being stupid. It's just some stupid people out here. That's all it boils down to. Nothing oh more, goodness. nothing less. Well, thank you for donking today. We do that every mm -hmm. morning at 8.04. And if you missed it, you can hit up the website, power1051fm.com, keyword breakfast club. Now, when Nick Cannon was here earlier, he was talking about cheating. And he said, would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? That was the conversation about, and that's what we're going to open up the phone lines for. 800-585-1051. Would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? Now, if you give for that cheating pass or give him that cheating pass, you get that same pass. You do? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. Right? Okay. It's The Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Good morning. Power 1051 is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's 820. Now, when we just left, we were talking, would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? Now, Angela Yee, where did this come from? Well, this is from the Brooklyn Nets. They've signed an NBA forward, Andre Kirilenko. And his wife is a Russian pop star, and she confessed that she allows him to cheat once Per year, she told ESPN women are always throwing themselves at him. And the more that you say something is forbidden, the more a guy is going to want to do it. She said, if I know about it, it's not cheating. And that's that. That's so true. I wonder what the stipulations are, though. What do you mean? Like, it got to be some stipulations. Would you does let she, your girl cheat Does, does she year? get to pick the girl? Like, what? Yeah, but would you let your girl cheat once a year? Um, If I get to pick the penis, I need to see it before she does it because you know. You, you, and you, how would you pick? What, what do you mean you want to pick it? I got to pick the penis. You, you know? line them all up and say you can have that yeah, That's right. You're not sleeping with nothing my size or better. Let me pick you this nice guy with a two-inch erection and, oh. you know, do what you do. Let's keep it moving. So say she picks the vagina. That's even better. It could be some old 90-year-old granny It could vagina. be Gabrielle Sidibe. She definitely got better taste than Gabrielle said it okay? If she want to escalate, we can go to the car dealership and get a nice big black escalate. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to pick the flyest chick for you. I mean, let's keep it real. So there you have it. Oh, oh, it's back to me now. She'd be picking for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, nah. I'm cool. All right. Well, then. Uh, fair I'm cool. I, I, I mean, I'd rather cheat on her back if she's going to pick. Well, let's go to the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? Would you, Sonia? Good morning. No. It's STDs out there, and some of y'all guys, y'all don't like using condoms. Oh, I love using condoms. Well, what if he, what if he said, okay, look, I'm going to tell you about yeah. it. I'll use a condom and everything, and just yeah. once a year, and I'll be great the whole rest of the time. No. Well, I'm going to do it behind your back anyway, so ha-ha, stop it. Hello, oh, who's this? Bianca. Bianca, good morning. Would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? Hell no. First of all, honestly, the world we live in today, you might as well, because the dude will go out and do whatever the you want to do in the first place. You ain't got a curse. Come on now, Rachel Jantel. What's the girl name? Jantel. Jantel. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, but I wouldn't do it per se, but I mean, they're going to do whatever they want to do anything. You're I'm not going to allow it, but he's going to do it anyway. Thank you, Bianca. John, good morning. Yeah, man, you got to uh, come home and get this. <laughs> John. <laughs> oh, 
1051 Would you give your spouse a once a year cheating pass? It's the Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Power 1051 is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Taking your phone calls right now, 800-585-1051. Would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? Now, where did this come from, Yee? Uh, this came from a story about the Brooklyn Nets player. And um, apparently his wife, Andre Karolinko's wife, allows him to cheat once a year. She said women are always throwing themselves at him. So why not do it? If you make it forbidden, he's going to want to do it anyway. All right. Would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? Call us right now. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Spell 1051 is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's 8.30. Now, don't forget your next chance to go to the iHeartRadio Music Festival. It happens at 9 o'clock. You want to see Justin Timberlake. You want to see J. Cole, Bruno Mars, and a host of others. While it happens at 9, we'll fly you down, pay for your airfare, your hotel, and you get to see some dope shows and some dope musicians. All right? That happens at 9 o'clock. Now, now, we're asking, would you give your spouse a once-a-year cheating pass? Now, Angela Yee. Yes. Where's the story coming from? This is from Andre Kirilenko from the Brooklyn Nets. They just mm -hmm. signed him. And his wife is saying that women are always throwing themselves at him. So she said she told her husband he could sleep with a woman besides her once a year. She said, if I know about it, it's not cheating. It's like having an easy pass in a relationship. We call that easy ass. Now, the best reason that she should do this is because it's going to make him feel a little insecure. Mm. Like, is she really giving me permission to do this? If you're a real man, you should be nervous if your woman tells you something like that. Now, Charlamagne, you, you should be wondering, why is she allowing this to happen? happen now Charlamagne, if your lady allowed you allow this to happen to you would you do it would allow me to cheat once a year mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's what she really wanted for us <laughs> <laughs> and that's what she really wanted yeah yeah if that's what you want boo i'll say sure i mean would, I would, you, to, would you would you allow her to do it uh if i get to pick the penis I no, mean, you can't pick the penis. Nope, I gotta nope, pick it. You can't. Nope, you can't have nothing my size or better. You gonna get this nice guy with a two inch erection, and that's gonna be that. What about you, Envy? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Nah, and that's not gonna happen. What about you, Ye? Um. First of all, let's get Ye in a relationship before we start talking about. <laughs> yeah, him. this is all just too hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's go to the phone lines. We got Marcus on the line. Would you allow your spouse a once a year cheating past Marcus? No, I would not. Why not? I mean, who's to say she's not gonna do it again? I mean, who's to say she's not already doing it? Would and you? Would you want a uh, once a year cheating pass? Uh, uh huh. See, it depends on how close we are. Like, if we're married or something, no. But if we're just starting a relationship, I guess you can say so. Wow, that's a great start. All right, thank you, <laughs> JC. Good morning. What's going on, man? Would you give your spouse a once a year cheating pass? Hell no, because she might go out there and find some better D and might not come back. That's but why you got to pick the penis. That's the, that got to be the stipulation. We got to pick the penis. You got to put it down better so that won't happen. Hey, 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 but you might got a nigga out there like Mr. Marcus or something that's going on on the job. Hey, and the that's guy what, with syphilis? There you oh, go. Man. That's all you got to tell us. He got syphilis. You don't want that, baby. Oh, my goodness. That was a bad example. <laughs> Hello, who's this? This is Laura from Queens. Laura from Queens. Would you give your spouse a once a year cheating pass? Sure, no. What is the point of being in a relationship then? Then let's just call it what it is. We call, you come satisfy me, I satisfy you, and we call it a day. But if you're in a relationship, why would you need to go outside of it? If you're content, it's not them down. Why can't people just be faithful? It's not difficult when you love them and respect them. Like why did God create all this variety, man? There's so many different forms of women out here. And men, and people in Just general. like fruit. I don't just eat oranges every day. Every now and then I want an apple. Hello, who's that? little hairy kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> about that sleep with other people, man. What's your name, bro? D, from Brooklyn. Would you give your spouse a once a year cheating pass? Nah, man. Too much herpes and crabs out there. Mm. Would you want to do it though? Would you want to do it cheat once a year? He said oh, crabs. How old are you? Damn, hung up. He said a throwback STD. Hello, who's this? Hello, my name is Alexis. Alexis, would you give your spouse a once a year cheating pass? Yes, I would. Why? Because, I mean, they're going to look anyway. You might as well give them that one time. I mean, they're going to do it anyway. Hey, long baby, we're doing a study real quick. How tall are you? Oh, stop it. Uh, Don't listen to him. No, five, how tall three. Are you? five three. How much do you weigh? About 140. Okay, it's a direct correlation between chubby girls letting their guys cheat. Oh, stop and it. And pretty girls getting in shape not having it. She's stop not it, chubby. chubby. Stop 5 it. 3 143? Stop it. That's a little smart card now. No, Come on. Stop no, it. Not. Thank it's you, Mama. Have a good one. Right. That's a little fiat. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for calling. All right, now, Yee. Yes, Emmy. We got rumors coming up. Yes, and find out how much Oprah is paying Lindsay Lohan to do an appearance on her show. I can't believe that you can go ahead, go to rehab, act like a nutcase, and still get paid this amount of money just to be on Oprah's show. Okay, well, we find out at 8.50. Keep it locked. This is The Breakfast Club on Power 105.1. Good morning. I love this record, man, because... 
The guy on the hook looks just like Fromel that was on Catfish a couple weeks ago, man. Now, what's Catfish for people that don't know? Oh, my God. Catfish is the greatest show on television Explain right it, now. man. Explain it. Oh, my God. How oh do I explain gosh. Catfish, Angela Yee? For, since Envy clearly lives under a rock. It's a, a Manti Teo is the best example of someone who got He catfish. probably don't know who Manti Teo is. No, he, he, he was a football play player football who player. was yeah. having a relationship online with someone he thought was a woman. Turned out to be just some dude playing games with his emotions, but he was sending money, sending presents, talking all the time online, and never met them in person. That's when you get catfished. It's not what you thought it was. If you don't know what catfishing is at this point in, in the game, then it's not meant for you to know. It's like when you see one of those girls or guys on Twitter and their avatar looks completely different than how they look in real uh -huh. life. Mm -hmm. You got catfish. Okay. Well, call it 105 right now, 800 585 1051. You get a four pack of tickets to the Ball Up Street Ball Tour on July 20th at Nat Holman Gym at City College. All right, for tickets and open run info, check out ballup.com or call it 105. You got those tickets. Now, Angela Yee. Yes. Rumors coming up? Uh, yes, we are going to talk about Kim Kardashian. Find out what she tweeted that have everybody so angry on Twitter. Okay. Here's Jamie Foxx blaming on the alcohol. Rumors up next. It's the Breakfast Slum on Power 1051. Good morning. Right now, let's get into the rumors. K. Michelle, she squashes beef. Let's find out about it. Listen up. This just in. All the guys. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club on Power 1051. So Kim Kardashian sent out a tweet, and this uh, got people very upset. She said, my heart goes out <laughs> to Trayvon Martin's family and loved ones. Thoughts and prayers are being sent their way. Hashtag no justice. She put this on Twitter. Now, the problem is this. Somebody tweeted, Kim Kardashian tweeted earlier, no justice about the Trayvon case, but her dad was one of the attorneys that got O.J. acquitted of murder. <laughs> then they said, Kim Kardashian tweets in support of Trayvon when her own father helped get O.J. Simpson acquitted. This country is full of so many idiots. Kim doesn't need to shut up and do reality shows. She man. has to stop trying to yeah. be, be stop political. Stop trying to be political. Stop going with the popular topics. Everything you see everybody else tweeting about, you go the opposite see, way. But it doesn't matter what her dad did. This is her feelings. Her dad could have did anything that he wanted to do. Dad she, wasn't, killed. she wasn't saying no justice for... OJ for um when that happened with OJ Simpson. Wasn't she like fifteen at that time? Okay. Gosh, this is All I'm saying is every time Kim Kardashian crowd. tries to get political, exactly. it backfires. We don't want to hear Kim K's political views. It's a harsh just, audience. All right. Just get naked and do a reality. Yeah, show. You just worry about what shoes are hot right now. Uh -huh. Yes. And make sure Kanye don't chafe herself in them leather pants. You're okay, stupid. Lindsay Lohan. She's gonna be doing an interview with Oprah and they paid her two million dollars. They were negotiating mm -hmm. with her for four months. It's gonna be an eight part docuseries about her struggles, her career, her plans for the future. And, yeah, she signed that deal while she was at Betty Ford, and she also got two fully paid assistants and a stylist. Wow. I, gotta tell, I gotta tell my mom she overpaid for that one, because I'm a Pinkett Smith Winfrey nose Carter. Two million dollars for Lindsay Lohan right now? Nah, not at all. Now, if you're talking about Amanda Bynes, that's a different story. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan ain't hot right now. Yeah, Amanda Bynes took her spot. Absolutely. Her top spot. Now, it makes me feel like, what do we have to do to get two million dollars? You gotta go to rehab, mess right. your life up, act rude to people, hit people with your car, and then you can get two million dollars. Absolutely. Give me a minute. All right. I'm working uh, on it. Now, Robinson Cano, who is one of the first people that have signed with Rock Nation Sports, Jay-Z Sports Agency, has inked his first multi-million dollar deal, and that is going to be with Pepsi. Mm -hmm. He is actually going to be the MLB face of the beverage company, and his first ad is going to break today at City Field during the All-Star Game. Dope. So, good. see? Jay-Z already getting things done. Mm -hmm. And your boy Tyrese is not going to be doing any more albums. His last solo album is going to be... Black Rose. It's a double album, seven-part documentary, and a book. So he said, it's not only is this my most personal, but this will be the most important album. Six solo albums to gracefully bow out the Black Rose. The universe I created is going to keep you well-occupied. So, Okay. That doesn't mean he's not going to do TGT stuff, so don't worry. Yeah, because... What? <laughs> what? I'm saying, I just think you know. I just think TGT is a is a is a good look for uh, genuine tank because they need that right now. Well, I mean, they, they, they need that. Their tank shows, does a lot of writing for artists. Yeah, though. they do. Their shows were sold out. I'm not gonna lie, that I, um, because all I remember is Tank tweeting out that picture last year when he was in that little trap house. But wasn't that little trap house he was yeah, in? Mm -hmm. Like, Tank, why you in a trap house? It wasn't in there but a bench press and a TV with an ass on it. Nah, I did a, I went Not to even a, a flat screen. I went to a show <laughs> they did in New York. There was about 20, 25,000 people out there, 20,000 people out there. So, okay. show sold out. Okay. So, somebody wants to see that. Listen, they three talented individuals. All three of those guys individually could always sing. I'm just saying, Tank and Genuine need to look more than Tyrese. <laughs> <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> you are stupid. They're in Jersey this weekend, too. Oh, man. And there you have it. All right.
Thank you very much, Angela, for the rumors. Up next, we got the mix. Whatever you want to hear, 800-585-1051. Also, 9 o'clock, you want to go to Vegas to the iHeartRadio Music Festival to see Justin Timberlake. You want to see J. Cole. You want to see Bruno Mars and a host of others. Well, it happens at 9 o'clock. Keep it locked. It's the Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Here's Sierra. There you have it. Ace of Hood. Chris Brown, Ace Hood's albums and stores right now. What you guys think? I think that's one of those records that'll work at radio, but it won't be one of my personal favorites. I like okay. it. I like it so though, but uh, you know that's yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I like Body to Body better. It sounds like. But maybe I need to. This is a whole new record. This is that's a whole new. I era. mean, it's still him and Chris Brown. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it just sounds like I've, something I've heard before. It's but maybe I need to listen to it again, okay. turned up high because you had it kind of low in here. I like mm-hmm. Ace Hood, like I said, but it's, that's just that's nothing groundbreaking. It's, well, his album's in stores today, Trials and Tribulations. Yes. yes. Go get it, because Ace Hood can rap. Okay. Don't, don't let that record right there fool you. Now, if you missed well, that's our interviews... That's for the chicks, though. That ain't for me, no way. All right. Now, if you missed our interviews with Nick Cannon Good and word. Ludacris, you can hit up the website, power1051fm.com, keyword breakfast club. Mario will be joining us tomorrow. He was supposed to be on Monday, but because of the Trayvon verdict, uh, we just pushed it back a couple of days. Terry Martinez is up next. Now, if you want your next chance to go to the iHeartRadio Music Festival to see Justin Timberlake, J. Cole, Miguel, Chris Brown, Bruno Mars, and more, well, she has your next chance at 10 a.m. All right, you guys keep it locked. Charlamagne. Yes, uh, I want y'all to watch my dog show tonight, too, man. Ain't That America, uh, 1130 on MTV2, my man Lil Duval. He had a million people watch it last week, so let's try to do that again this week. And uh, my positive note is We cannot think of being acceptable to others Until we have first proven acceptable to ourselves That is a quote from the great Malcolm X Alright, yes. you guys have a great day Have a blessed day It's the Breakfast Club on Power 105.1 Good morning Flashing, lights, lights, Breakfast Club, bitches